Hey everyone, it's Ivan with Kipadger.com here to bring you some tips for the range and a little drill. I'm definitely a believer in the whole crawl, walk, run. So with respect to firearms training, fundamentals start there, eventually work from there. Always coming back, always working on fundamentals. With that though, on that journey, eventually you'll have maybe unconventional shooting positions, stuff along these lines. And while we work those on a static range, get familiar with them, understand how to get into them, how to get out of them, there comes the application part of it where I feel it actually is really beneficial to incorporate things into scenarios. That way, mind you, it's not the way to do it because everything's fluid, but by creating this scenario, it gives us the opportunity to actually perform it with a necessity because that's the way the scenario is created. So this drill we'll call friends, not friends, I guess, basically came up with a few years ago while I was contracting. And one of the contracts I was on, part of our job was to essentially patrol around the site. We had some local guards, make sure they were doing their job, making sure everything was kosher. So, as the saying goes, you can rent an Afghan, but you can't buy an Afghan. Is that PC? I digress. At any rate, per the scenario, we're driving along, we look over, talking to a couple guys, they make it quite apparent that they no longer wish to be working for us, at which point, they decide to incite some workplace violence. So we have to deal with the situation. So the drill starts with me sitting here in the driver's seat and per how we rolled around there, I basically have my rifle over here, waiting for me to grab it because that's the place we were in. What happens though is these guys, two of them, decide to get rowdy and I can only see one. The other's blocked by not only this B pillar, but also my seat. Creates a problem. So what I'm able to do, bring out my weapon and engage this first guy. Wanting to be careful not to blast your B pillar. Additionally, if you're doing this in your car and you have a muzzle brake, you may or may not send your headrest. That's why I borrowed this car. We won't mention it to them. At any rate, I'm gonna go ahead and engage this guy. We'll give him three rounds. At that point, I can't engage the other guy, so I need to get out of this vehicle. Having engaged that first threat, I wanna go ahead and get out of this vehicle. I'm gonna save my weapon. However, get out of this thing as quick as I can, and I wanna make myself as small as possible. So I'm gonna drop down into the urban prone. Whatever you wanna call it, laying as flat as possible while shooting. I'm gonna get down in the urban prone and I'm gonna engage the target. Now, I'll show you the targets in a second, the way they're set up. But ultimately what's happening, big picture, is I can't see this guy. I have to shoot from the urban prone. In doing so, I'm gonna basically shoot him in the legs, having him fall, at which point I can completely end the threat by shooting him and turning off the central nervous system. So I'll show you those targets. Right here we have our left hand target as we're sitting in the vehicle. I have just some of these Sage Dynamic Vital Anatomy targets. We're gonna put three rounds on this guy and then we're gonna deal with the guy on our right. On this target, our right hand target, we don't have anything up top. It's obscured anyway from the B pillar as well as the seat. Down here, we have this vertical strip. What does this show us? Dude's leg, never skip leg day. Ultimately though, while I haven't ever had it happen to me, I imagine a bullet passing through my tibula or fibula pretty much be a non-starter for standing. So what we wanna do, put a round through this dude's leg, at which point we're gonna go ahead in our make-believe world of this scenario and say he falls to our left. So shot this dude in the leg, he falls this way to our left as we're shooting. We're now presented with his head so we can turn off his central nervous system and thereby in the threat. Making sure I have my rifle all gassed up and I have my ear pro on. Shooting inside a vehicle or any confined space, incredibly loud. Got my pro timer so I can not lie to myself and be like, oh, that was super fast. So once I have all this, my target's there, I'm all set up, hit my pro timer, get ready to go. On the buzzer, turn, engage my threat three times. Safe my weapon and get the hell out of this death box. Now, unceremoniously, make myself as small as possible, engage the dude's leg, and finish the job. 
At this point, scan and assess, do whatever you're gonna do. And the entire thing, start to finish. There we go. On that run, last round broke at 12.28. Was it fast? Not really. I've done better, but you get what you get. When we come back and look at the target, you can see I ran this a couple times. Ended up throwing a couple rounds there. At least got two of my rounds on each of those strings in center mass. But we look at this other guy, and that's where this drill actually gets tricky. Here you can see I ended up only getting one round on here out of each of those iterations. Ended up dropping one. I'd like to say I got both, but I didn't. What we get out of this is a bunch of different stuff. One, gives us the opportunity to shoot out of a vehicle. Always a loud experience. Extricate ourselves as quick as possible. Drop down with a reason into the urban prone. Unless you have some monster truck, you're probably not going to be able to just throw your rifle up. And then at that point, engage the target. What this is also teaching us is about our offset. So offset based on zero is point of aim, point of impact, whatever your zero is set at. Based on that, if the target's further, closer, somewhere in there, you're either going to be shooting a little bit high or a little bit low. That's going to change based on distance. With this, rather than having that vertical shift, since we're down there on our side shooting from the urban prone, we're going to have a horizontal movement, lateral. Horizontal lateral? It's gonna move side to side. So what that does is, if otherwise we would have been okay because we're just a little higher or a little low, at this point, because we're shooting at a narrow strip, if we're off a little bit, it's gonna to go to the right or to the left, and we're gonna completely miss, which I ended up doing on a couple shots. So it gives us the opportunity to work on that and actually see that rather than just like, oh yeah, I read about this in the internet. When you actually go try it, you're like, oh, okay, like, yeah. Like there's my shift at this distance. I need to go ahead and aim a little bit higher, a little bit off to the right, so that I can go ahead and get my round where it needs to be. And in addition to all that stuff, we also learn about our gear. If stuff's getting snagged, trying to get out of the vehicle. If we can actually get down into the prone in a pretty quick manner. And then lastly, if we're running the optic, I encourage you to try it with your optic and then without. If you have some sort of red dot, it's actually really beneficial for shooting in unconventional positions because as long as you can see through it and see where that dot is, pull the trigger, you're good to go. It doesn't matter. Whereas you end up shooting with iron sights in unconventional positions, your body needs to get in that position because you need to line those sights up to actually make your shot. Completely changes the game. Also with this drill, this scenario, it's just that. It's just a drill don't get in the weeds with it. It's like, well, why don't you just drive away? Totally valid. Why don't you just drive away? Or why don't you move yourself so you can actually see that other guy that's blocked by the B pillar in your seat and then there's cool. Like maybe that's an option. All this stuff is a thinking man's game. There is no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever you choose to do in a given situation. This is just set up so that you perform certain things and actually have a reason to perform them rather than just going out and be like, I'm going to work on urban prone today and get down, shoot in the urban prone. Not that there isn't value in that. This just forces you into a situation where you can actually see like, oh, like I can see it being applied here. Like this is how it might be used. So with that, if you want to give it a try, give it a try, see how it does for you. Probably use your friend's vehicle so you don't wreck your interior. As always, thanks for joining us at kibadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.